boss, boss, we've just signed this Brazilian lad and he's outside right now. This boy will be the next big thing. Trust. All right, okay, okay. Let's see what he can do. Right. <laughs> mm, I'm fired, aren't I? Correct. Today, Neymar is 30 years old. Let that sink in. If you haven't watched Netflix's Neymar documentary, be sure to go ahead and do that. It really is great. Now, this video is not that. Where that focused on his life, this will focus on his playing career. When you mention any combination of the words flair, football, and Brazil in a sentence, what's the first name that comes to mind? That's right, it's Ronaldinho. Ever since Ronaldinho graced the footballing world and showed us that even at the highest level, football can be fun and expressive, we've all collectively been clamoring for the next Ronaldinho to take center stage. But the thing is, we got it. In fact, we got more than that. Neymar. Neymar's had a more sustained career and is quite frankly better than Ronaldinho ever was in almost every measurable category bar national team accolades and Ballon d'Ors. But even those factors can be largely explained thanks to the fact that Ronaldinho played with these guys and he never had to compete with these guys. However, before anyone calls for my head, don't get me wrong. Both had or are having great careers and should be praised for their contributions to football. I'm only saying all of this to note that one is universally praised, while the other is arguably more divisive than any other top player in the modern era. And it's not the one with, uh, passport issues. Which brings us to the reason for this video. Neymar will never reach his potential. At least, not the potential that many believe he should have reached years ago. And honestly, that's okay. We'll go into more detail over the course of this video, but he's achieved far more than most footballers ever have and most footballers ever will, and he continues to give great performances whenever he's fit. But I can definitely see where the doubters are coming from. Perhaps he could have achieved more. Today, we're going to discuss a few reasons why Neymar gets the hate he does, why he hasn't and probably will never reach the expectations that many have set for him, and maybe a few other funny observations on my own part. With that being said, what's the deal with Neymar? What's up guys, welcome back to the channel, really hope you're all doing well. Ha hang on, Wh what is that? Uh, oh, it's you. You you watch the channel. Oh, well, slap a like while you're at it, my guy. <clears throat> all right, let's get right into it. Pressure creates diamonds, but it also bursts pipes. From as early as this man's first nutmeg, the pressure for him to become the savior of Brazilian football was insane. We briefly spoke last week about his rise to stardom at Santos. Alongside Gonzo, the entirety of Brazil was begging for this man to be included in the Seleção squad for the 2010 World Cup. The boy was only 18, and as he's gotten older, the pressure on him has only gotten greater and greater. Couple that with the fact that Brazil as a footballing nation has regressed a tad from what it once was, and the pressure quite simply became insurmountable. Something that's evidenced by the fact that he became the captain of the national team at 22, stepped down, was reinstated, and then stripped, all within about 5 years between 2014 and 2019. Perceived immaturity and lashing out have been the main contributors to this. Listen, I never said the guy was perfect. His journey with the Brazil national team has been quite a tumultuous one, and from the outside looking in, it's easy to see how this could be difficult to understand. After all, he is the fourth most capped player in Brazil history, and will likely end up in at least second place when it's all said and done. He is the second highest goal scorer in Brazil history, only seven off the great Pele, a record he'll likely own outright one day. However, despite all of that, he is still yet to win anything with Brazil's senior team outside of the now discontinued Confederation Cup back in 2013 and Olympic gold in 2016. Silverware is silverware, but by Brazilian standards, as well as the hype that surrounded this dude his whole career, this is not a good return at all. The wonder kid that has yet to deliver. They got to the semi-finals of the 2014 World Cup, but he was out injured from the quarterfinals onwards. And perhaps injury wasn't that bad of a trade-off in this tournament, because one round later, he needs some milk. If if you have any children watching this, please please cover their eyes. All kidding aside, Neymar was electric in this tournament. Seriously, he was he was unreal. If he doesn't get need in the back, it could very well have been Brazil going through to the finals and not Germany. Brazil did win the 2019 Copa America, but Neymar was unfortunately out injured and therefore did not participate. No medal for you, big man. He led Brazil to the 2021 Copa America. However, 
Unfortunately for him, Argentina had a date with destiny as Messi broke his country's silverware curse. He was named as the joint player of the tournament alongside Messi that time around, but it's not like that did anything to make up for the lack of significant international silverware. It is a shame, and perhaps he should be doing better. But with the 2022 World Cup coming up, who knows what could happen. Anyone from Brazil watching, let us know how you feel about Neymar and the national team in the comments. And speaking of Messi, Neymar joined Barcelona in 2013. Apart from a bit of a controversial onboarding, to many, this was it. Neymar would get a few years to learn under Messi, and then, boom. Ballon d'Ors, World Player of the Year awards, tax evasion- oh, oh, wait, wait. Never mind, that one, that one actually happened. In any case, early on, the prophecy seemed as though they were coming true. Messi, Suarez, and Neymar. The fabled MSN. If I'm honest with you guys, I think back to this point in history quite a bit, and sometimes I struggle to believe that it actually happened, and that it was less than a decade ago. These three were frighteningly good. They are not only the highest scoring attacking trio in a season in the 21st century with 131 goals, but they are also the second and fourth highest scoring attacking trios with 122 and 110. Also, hats off to number 5, Messi, Fabregas, and Xavi. Goal scoring geniuses. All of them. <clears throat> anyway, a treble in 2015, a buttload of insane performances, and one or two bloopers later, and Neymar was undoubtedly living up to the hype. And then, almost all of a sudden in 2017, reports were coming out that Neymar was potentially looking to leave Barcelona. A real shame, but let's be real lads. His Barcelona buyout clause was 222 million euros. The highest transfer in history at that point was Paul Pogba's 99 million euro return to Man United. Less than half that amount. I mean, who in their right mind would- Oh. P PSG would. There was and still is a lot of speculation over why Neymar left as well as the rather egregious circumstances surrounding his departure. But several reports at the time seemed to say that Neymar felt that at Barca, no matter how good he became, he would forever be in Messi's shadow. One of the reasons Neymar left Barca is because the play was completely centered around Messi and Neymar was forced to work for him. The words of Unai Emery, manager of PSG at the time Neymar signed. And this particular interview where he said this was kind of wild too. For context, Emery was on his way out of PSG when he gave this interview to Tactical Room back in 2018. He went on to say, I know when I am the principal person in the group and when I am not. At PSG, the leader is Neymar. At Manchester City, it's Pep Guardiola. My priority was to make Neymar happy. It didn't matter how. That is a wild statement. As fans, we always suspect these things looking in from the outside, but to hear someone so high up saying it outright? A coach no less. Crazy stuff. In any case, the exact reasons Neymar left PSG, only Neymar truly knows. Was it control over the team? Was it stepping out of the Great One's shadow? Or was it the fact that he was able to finally feed his children after he more than doubled his wages from £300,000 per week to £700,000? We'll never know, I guess. However, on the Messi front, what we can say is that their relationship doesn't seem as fractured as the media would have liked you to believe. In fact, it didn't back then either. Despite that, perhaps there is a dash of merit to those claims. If you were in his situation, what would you do? Stay at Barca and fight for legacy, or go for the money in one of the nicest places on earth to be extremely wealthy while also being able to play at a decently high level, a level high enough to reach a Champions League final? And before you answer, remember that Messi quite literally just won another Ballon d'Or a few weeks ago, four seasons after Neymar left. He's actually won two since Neymar left. Now there's more to it than that, but his decision to leave Spain made him subject to an enormous amount of hate from even non-Barca fans for the reasons stated above. And I can see why. Alright, so this one shouldn't come as a surprise to many, Neymar is partial to a tad bit of simulation. Okay, maybe more than a tad bit. He has been prone to show acting for several years now, but it was in 2018 when his reputation as a diver truly peaked. The 2018 World Cup. Quite literally the worst competition to gain a negative reputation for something. The world watched on as Neymar played much of the tournament on the ground, rolling in pain. 14 minutes to be exact. The memes were incredible. All the same, something that many glossed over was that in this tournament, on average, Neymar was fouled more than any other player. 5.2 fouls per match, 26 in total. 
You can make the argument that some of those files weren't legitimate, but what you can't argue is that since around 2018, the World Cup year, Neymar's fitness has taken a huge dip due to injuries, and a large number of those injuries are contact related. Here is a chart of the number of games he's played in all competitions per season since 2013, and here is a chart of how frequently he's been getting fouled. 2018, the worst time to have the eyes of the world on you given the context. With all the kicks and knocks this guy gets for club and country, it's not hard to see that he's legitimately fouled far more than many people want to believe. His sombreros are probably a contributing factor to this, but that hardly makes slashing this man in half every other match acceptable. This isn't Sunday League, after all. And while we're on the issue of diving, almost every top attacker dives, it's commonplace at this point. And while it is frustrating to watch, I don't think it's always a case of cheating as some people label it. When we see numbers like Neymar's and also understand that unless a player goes down, a foul isn't called, it's clear that while there is a bit of simulation going on, some of these dives are not only a response to bad refereeing, but also acts of self-preservation. Note how I said some, but like I always try to do on this channel, it's only fair that we try to approach topics like this from both perspectives. Alright, for this next one, I can't for the life of me understand where the hate comes from. Imagine being a superstar footballer, living in Europe, and not being able to attend your sister's birthday in Brazil every year. It sounds pretty horrific, right? Well, if you ever get in this situation like I know one of you will, fear not. I have a solution. Either get suspended or injured around your sister's birthday, and you're good to go. Now, the only reason I know this to be a winning formula is that that's exactly what Neymar's done since 2014. It's, it's, I can't lie, it's, it's hard to imagine that this is all a coincidence. Listen, you can't fault him for being a loving brother. I like to play with the best, and Neymar is one of them. But what we would have to negotiate is his sister's birthday. Sergio Ramos said this back in 2017 when he was still a Madrid player. Now that they're on the same team, I wonder if they've begun negotiations yet. Last but not least, celebrity status. Whenever there are eyes on you, you'll always attract love as well as hate. But when you're Neymar, this is amplified to an enormous degree. Reports indicate that as early as 2015, at 23 years of age, the man was making more money from sponsorships than from actually playing the game. This has surely done nothing but cause outrage for many supporters that feel that he's not worth it. Which I would say is simply untrue. First of all, he's a phenomenal footballer. You really can't argue with that statement. Second of all, he knows how to get attention, and as the Jake Pauls of the world have shown us, attention sells. And third of all, tying into point number two, whether you like it or not, football is a spectacle. It always has been. An ongoing drama that keeps us coming back and even allows idiots on YouTube to make videos about it. I've spent shameless amounts of money on FIFA, I pay to go to matches every now and then, I'm subscribed to all sorts of football related services, and I buy a new shirt every season or so. And I know for a fact that there are millions upon millions of others that do the same. Simply put, we're kind of all addicted. In a pretty direct way, the money and fame that goes towards these guys is kind of our own doing. In any case, the ungodly amounts of money circulating in the industry are naturally going to flow to the main guys. And in my eyes, if these two didn't exist, this guy would have a very strong claim to the protagonist role. So I don't really understand the hate from this perspective. Footballers are all just dudes that stumbled upon millions as teenagers at the end of the day. And if we're going to vilify Neymar for it, we got to keep the same energy for every flashy baller. Except in Golo Kante. Bless his soul. There is obviously more to the story of Neymar and his crazy career, but let's end there and take this moment to address the statement posed at the start. Will Neymar ever truly reach his potential? No. But that's alright. Because, again, that is more a result of our own expectations than anything else. He definitely could have achieved more, but he's also won a ton already in the first place. From most of the reports I've read over the years, he's a great trainer, and in almost every match that I watch him play, he's frequently the best player on the pitch. And while I do agree that he can display spats of laziness from time to time, this isn't the case nearly as much as everyone seems to say. Taking this season's Champions League into account, for example, he's run, on average, 10.7km per match. 
which is more than a whole lot of other top players that play in similar positions as him, but those players aren't labelled as lazy nearly as much as Neymar is, never at all in some cases. And this was frequently the case for Neymar over the years by the way, if, if you actually watch him the dude puts in a shift. But it is a shame that injuries and a few lapses in judgement have weighed him down. It happens, unfortunately. But leaving all that aside, one of the biggest problems is that we all collectively expected him to take over from Messi and Ronaldo and be that guy. They were both entering their late 20s when Neymar truly began to perform. However, no one expected these two to go on for as long as they have. Regardless, the expectations on Neymar persisted. Throw in the fact that he's Brazilian and the expectations blew up to insane levels. And in some ways, that's on us. As you can see, I'm clearly a fan of his and hope he goes on to achieve insane things in the years to come. But perhaps my opinion doesn't matter. What do you guys think about Neymar? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. That's all from me today. Hope you all enjoyed. Cheers and I'll catch you in the next one.